to the Contagious series. I'm your host, John Snow, and sitting with me is the world-famous epidemiologist, Dr. Clayton. Uh, before we begin, I would just like to thank Shoppers Drug Mart for sponsoring this video. Uh, our viewers actually have the special privilege of going down to Shoppers, and if you just ask the pharmacist for a vaccine, uh, one will be appointed for you for free. So on today's episode, uh, we'll be talking about whooping cough and the importance of uh, maternal vaccines. We have Dr. Clayton, as I mentioned earlier, with us today to explain everything we need to know about the contagious infection and if vaccinating mothers and the newborns is actually beneficial. To begin, let's have Dr. Clayton uh, tell us a little bit about this contagious infection. Well, John, pertussis, commonly known as whooping cough, is a highly contagious respiratory tract infection caused by the bacteria on Bordetella pertussis. It is characterized by uncontrollable bouts of intense coughing that make it difficult for the individual to breathe. The gasping for air between coughing makes this specific whooping noise, hence the name of the disease. It is considered contagious since it is transmitted from person to person through coughing or sneezing while in close proximity. In patients infected with Bordetella pertussis, the incubation period usually lasts 7 to 10 days, but incubation periods as long as 4 weeks have also been observed. Symptoms of pertussis usually develop within 5 to 10 days after you are exposed. Sometimes pertussis symptoms do not develop for as long as 3 weeks. The disease usually starts with cold-like symptoms and maybe a mild cough or fever. Therefore, healthcare professionals often do not suspect or diagnose it until the more severe symptoms start to appear. Early symptoms can last for one to two weeks and usually include runny nose, low-grade fever, mild occasional cough or apnea, which is a pause in breathing normally seen in babies. After one to two weeks and as the disease progresses, the traditional symptoms of pertussis may appear and include Fits of many rapid coughs, followed by a high-pitched whoop sound. Vomiting during or after the coughing fits. Exhaustion after coughing fits. Pertussis can cause violent and rapid breathing over and over until the air is gone from your lungs. When there is no more air in the lungs, you are forced to inhale with a loud whooping sound. This extreme coughing can cause you to throw up and be very tired. Although you are often exhausted after a coughing fit, you usually appear fairly well in between. Coughing fits usually become more common as bad as the illness continues and can occur more often as at night. The coughing fits can go on for up to 10 weeks or more. In babies, the coughing can be minimal or not even there. Babies may have symptoms known as apnea, which is a pause in the child's breathing pattern. Wow, that is actually terrifying. So informative, by the way. Especially the fact that it's transmitted from person to person and it begins with cold-like symptoms. So you literally won't even know when you're infected. So thanks, Dr. Clayton, uh, for giving us some information about whooping cough. Uh, I know you're the expert, but uh, I also did some research of my own about the history. So I'm just going to share that with our viewers. Uh, so let's just delve in. So in the seventh century, during the Su Dynasty, a pertussis-like illness was described by Chinese medical scholar Yang Feng Chao as the cough of 100 days. It is considered an endemic disease in developing and developed countries with frequent outbreaks occurring sporadically at different places around the world. In the United States, whooping cough has become an endemic, but is currently considered the most common vaccine-preventable disease. In Canada, whooping cough vaccination was implemented during the mid-1940s, and most people born since then were likely vaccinated. Thereafter, the number of cases steadily decreased and stabilized between 1970 and 1989 and the mean of 318 cases were reported annually. Since 1990, there was a resurgence of whooping cough with numerous epidemic years. During 1998, around 5,000 cases were reported, the highest number since 1950. 26% of those uh, were occurred among adolescents or adults. Overall, it was reported that during the 1990s, whooping cough caused an estimated 20 to 40 million cases worldwide and 200 to 400,000 of them being resulting in deaths. Can you believe these numbers? 20 to 40 million people in this time and age. That is just crazy. To put that into perspective, Canada currently has a population of roughly 37 million. That means that all of Canada would be a case of pertussis. Wow. Would you care to elaborate? Yeah, it's crazy. When you hear such high numbers, and the examples you gave really helps. Put into perspective on what we have dealt with in the present and what we are currently what we have dealt with in the past i need to say and what we're currently dealing with in 2014 it was published that worldwide there was an estimated 24.1 million cases of pertussis 
and about 160,700 deaths per year. It is also amazing to see that just last year, 2017, the reported cases and percent hospitalization by age group was a total of 15,808 in the United States and a total of 13 reported deaths. Even during 2015, state health departments reported 20,762 cases of pertussis to Center of Disease Control. This represents a 37 decrease compared to 32,971,000. Well, I meant to say 32,971 oh, okay. cases reported in 2014. There were high incidence trends observed in 2015, which were similar to those of 2014 and 2013. The majority of deaths occurred among babies younger than three months old. This incidence rate of pertussis among babies exceeded that of all other age groups. Yes, yeah, so that's actually a topic that uh, my research highlighted on, uh, was that the majority of deaths are amongst babies. Would you care to just explain some of this? Yes. Well, if an infant or young child contracts bacterium, it can often be fatal, especially in infants under six months old. They're particularly vulnerable to the bacterium because their immune system is not fully yet formed. Infants younger than two months are the most vulnerable to this infection because they rely solely on their mother for protective antibodies. So if a woman gets a pertussis vaccine while she's pregnant, she will deliver a high dose of antibodies to her unborn child, ensuring that her child is protected against the disease. Well then, I guess it's a no-brainer. I really don't know why mothers aren't getting their whooping cough vaccination. Indeed, they should. There's even research done to show the effectiveness of pertussis vaccines. Actually, back to 2012 and 2013, a team of researchers in the UK performed a case control study to determine the effectiveness of the maternal pertussis vaccination in protecting infants from the illness. The selected cases were infants under eight weeks who have been diagnosed with a pertussis infection. The controls were infants born consecutively after each case at the same practice as the cases. The odds ratio were calculated to determine the association between maternal vaccination and the prevalence of infants with a pertussis infection. The results of the study showed that only 17% of the mothers of the infants with pertussis got the vaccine while they were pregnant, whereas 71% of the mothers of the infants did not have the va pertussis vaccine while pregnant. So basically, the study concluded that the maternal pertussis vaccination is effective 93% of time in preventing whooping cough in infants under eight weeks of age. There's even more intensive research out there showing the positive effects of maternal vaccination. Hmm. So that's great. All mothers really should consider getting vaccinated to prevent exposing their babies to this illness. So realistically, if any of you viewers are mothers or expecting mothers, you really should be going to get your vaccine. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are sponsored by Shoppers Drug Mart. Thanks you again for uh, sponsoring this video. And uh, if you just head down to your nearest uh, local Shoppers Drug Mart, you can get a free vaccine courtesy of us. And uh, remember to smash that like button and I'll catch you next week.